So next up, what we'd like to talk about is return data types. And this is something completely new in PHP 7. So previously, we could determine the data type of an argument specifically. But what you can also do is determine the data type of the returned statements output. So this is something that really allows you to structure your application and make sure that what you're receiving back from a function or even a method is what you want it to be. So our simple script contains a function and this function is going to return a string. So when we invoke this function like we are right here, it will return that string data. And then I'm also placing this inside of var export. And that's because what we're going to return from this function will vary. We may return an array or an object. So making sure that whatever's returned goes through the var export will make sure it's filtered. And then we can echo it out to the browser. Otherwise, if you let's say echo out an array, you'll get an error. So I'm just making sure that whatever's returned from this function is exported properly. So that's all that's happening here. And if I take a look at the browser, we can see the script is working perfectly. Now, the issue is that what's being returned here is not being checked. Its data type isn't checked. So we may not be 100% certain by the arguments that's passed in and all the processing that's happened with that function that it's going to return data of the correct type. It may be the correct value, but it may not be the correct data type. So that could be a little bit of an issue. So what I can do now is make sure that just like you can do with your arguments, try to get the function to return the correct data type. Now we're going to start out with those new data type declarations, which are to do with the primitive values such as string, integer, float and bool. So let's take a look at this. What I want to do is after we've declared our arguments and potentially the type declarations for those arguments, I then want to, after the ending bracket, put in a colon. And then after that, you want to type in the data type declaration that you want for this function to return. So in my case right here, I would say string. But for argument's sake, let's say I change that to integer. Well, now we're going to have an issue because this function is returning data that is of the type string. So let's hit refresh and we'll find out that we'll get an error from the PHP compiler and it will say that the data return function must give back data that is of a type integer. At the moment, it's giving a data type of string and so that's where we're getting the error. So I could say, let's say 20, save that and hit refresh. And there you go, we no longer get an error because the data type that we're returning no longer mismatches the data type declaration that we've assigned here. Now also there is a bit of polymorphism with your primitive data type declaration. So again, don't forget primitive data is a boolean, a string, an integer and a float. So if you choose any one of those, int, bool, float or string, there is a bit of polymorphism like we had with the type declarations on our arguments. So for example, if I turn this into a string, well, this is technically of the string data type. But what happens when I save this and hit refresh? Well, the PHP compiler identified that that string just contained a number. So it simply removed it out of the string and it turned it into an integer. Then also you could have, let's say, a floating point number, so 22.22. Again, this isn't a valid integer. You can only have whole numbers and you cannot have a decimal place in an integer. So if I go ahead and save this, you'll see it polymorphs and all it does is it strips away the decimal place. Likewise, if that was in a string and I save that, you'll notice again, we just get 22. Now, we can also say true. Don't forget about true. That is one. If we hit refresh, there you go, or one. And false will be a zero. So if I say zero right there, there you go. Now, we also have the other numerical data type, which is float. Now, float will allow us 
to, again, polymorph, let's say, the Boolean values, such as false. So if I hit refresh now, you'll notice that false returns 0.0, .0 whereas an integer just returned 0. And also true will be 1.0. Then also we can convert a string as well. So we could say 20, for example, hit refresh. And you'll notice it converted that into a floating point number. And also we could say, let's say 20.22. Now, if I save this and refresh, you'll notice that we get this really long and funny number. Now, when you understand binary, it actually becomes very difficult for computers to store floating point numbers. And this is an issue that we face all the time as programmers. You may have to put it into a rounding function and so forth. Because the issue is we're working with fractional numbers here. And even if I was to, let's say, strip away the quotes, now it is a proper floating point number, it still will render the exact same result. And even if I took away this right here, the data type declaration, and save it and hit refresh, you'll notice again, it still gives us this number. So it has nothing to do with the data type declaration and nothing to do with the polymorphism. It is just the way in which floating point numbers are stored in binary. They are very difficult to work with. And unfortunately, PHP does suffer like all other programming languages when it comes to the floating point numbers. Next up, we have the Boolean data type. Now again, any data type can be converted or polymorphed into the Boolean data type. So for example, if we have a number, whether it be a floating point number or an integer, it doesn't matter. If it is not zero, then it will return true. So if I hit refresh now, you'll notice 20.22 returns true. But if it was just zero, then you would get false. And again, if you just said 0 0.000 and so forth, again, you get false anyway. And then also you could have, let's say a string, an empty string will return false. A string with zero will also return false as well. A string with one will return true. And in fact, a string with any characters in will return false true as well. It's a populated string, so it returns truthy. So there you go. That is the Boolean declaration type. And then also you have string. And again, any data type can be converted into a string, such as an integer, a floating point number, like so. And again, you can tell it's a string because it has the quotation marks around it. And you also have true and false. So if I was to say true, there you go. It would convert to a string with one. And false would convert into an empty string, like so. So any data type can be converted into a string. And likewise, the same goes for the Boolean data type. It's only when it comes to the integers and floats that not everything will polymorph correctly. So these are the primitive declaration types that we can apply. String, bool, int, float. They are your primitive types. But we also have those other declaration types that are not to do with primitive values. They're to do with object-based values. And again, they do not polymorph. So let's take a look at the array data declaration type. This means the function can return an array which could just be a standard array like so, which will have a zero index base. And also you can return an associative array. So you could say the key hello is equal to the value 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and hit refresh. And there again, you can return associative arrays as well. Now also on top of that, you can set a data type declaration to be of a certain object type. So let's go ahead and create a class called myobj. And we're just going to open and close the parentheses. And in there, you would have your properties and methods. So my class can build objects. And what I can do is I can say, right, this function is going to return an object or an instance of 
my obj so this function must return an object that comes from that class so now i can say new my obj so that is now a new object that came from that class and that is now acceptable here for this data type declaration so i'm going to save that and hit refresh and you'll notice it did an error however if i created another class so we'll say cake well now if i create a new instance a new object from the cake class then what it's going to say is okay you are returning an object but the object didn't come from the my obj class so if i hit refresh now you'll notice that it says this function must return an instance of meaning an object created by the my obj class and also don't forget you can have interfaces as well so i can say an interface and we can say register so what an interface will do is check to make sure a class has certain methods on it and properties as well and then i can implement that interface so i can say this class implements the register interface and then i can say that the object that is being returned must have that register applied so that object must come from a class that implements a certain interface so i can say register as well so you don't have to directly mention the class and if i go ahead and save this i'll still get an error because don't forget we have the cake object being returned an instance of cake and that doesn't implement the interface of register so if i was to change that to my obj well this object comes from this class which does implement this interface so if i save it and hit refresh you'll notice i don't get an error now don't forget we're working with objects here and what are functions in php well they are first class citizens meaning they are treated as objects functions are objects essentially so we can actually get rid of all this for the time being and we can say that this function must return another function by again setting this to callable so whenever we see callable what do you call you can only call functions so now what we're going to do is we're going to say right well this function is going to return a new function and this can be echo hello so now that we are saying this function must return another function let's hit refresh and then you'll notice it has allowed this you can't just return a standard object anymore so if i say array 20 300 save it hit refresh you'll notice it's a fatal error because it must be a callable it must return a function and this is actually really good because when you create an api and so forth you may want your function to do something so i'm going to say do something and then call back a function and then we will pop in a line break so now when i save this and hit refresh you'll notice my original function that i called produced the string and then once it's finished what it can do is it can call back a function so it can have extended functionality via the api so that's a really nice feature that you have now finally we have the self declaration type now this declaration type can only be used within a class so i'm going to create a new class and we're going to give it the name my obj and then we're just going to paste this in and encapsulate our data return function so now this function is a method and we're going to say that this function can only return an object that came from the same class came from itself so i'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that and we'll also get rid of this as well and i shall say that what we're going to return is whatever's passed into the object argument now again i can use the self declaration type on the argument itself but i'm not going to do that because i want this declaration type to take precedent here so once we've done that we also need to change the way that this is called so we need to generate a new object first of all so i'm going to create a new variable 
that's going to be equal to a new object that came from my OBJ. And then I'm going to target that object and call the data return method. So this class right here will then build an object and then we can use the data return method that is within that object. And what we can do now is we can pass in an object. So let's go ahead and create a second object. And then we can go ahead and pass in a new instance of my OBJ. So as this right here is now assigned to this argument and is being returned, it won't error. And that's because this object came from itself. It came from this class. Let's go ahead and save that and hit refresh. And you'll notice it returned it and said, this is an object that came from itself. But however, if I was to create a new class, so I'll say this will be the class of cake. And I'll just say, right, pass in a new cake instance or object that came from the cake class. Well, now it violates that data type because what happens is it wants an object that came from itself to be returned from this function. And well, it's getting an object from the cake class. So there are your return type declarations now available on functions themselves.